Can you hear it? These walls really are talking. I totally agree. Let's give them more to talk about. Let's make history. Let's sit at the kitchen table and share your stories. Hey there, my name is Omar Phoenix and you guys will recognize me as the violinist for the musical ensemble performing alongside Jennifer Cumberbatch for the If These Walls Could Talk performance and education series at the Neil Cochran House Museum here in Austin, Texas. When I got called to do this particular opportunity, I'll be very, very honest, I was coming out of a pretty rough time in my life. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder um, earlier last year in 2019 after probably about four years of panic attacks, anxiety attacks, major depressive episodes, a lot of it stemming from my childhood and teenage years and young adult years um, and an upbringing as an LGBTQ individual. I am gay. I'm an Austin native. Um, however, even though I grew up here, I grew up in a very conservative Latino household um, that encouraged a lot of like support of the arts, but as far as who I was as a person, um, I wasn't really celebrated. Um, I was more like tolerated and a lot of times prayed over in a very religious sense because people just, the, the, a lot of my family members just really didn't try to make an effort to understand who I was as a young gay person. Um, it created a lot of psychological trauma and stress. Going forward into my adult years, I developed um, alcohol, a battle with alcoholism, an eating disorder, um, just a lot of self-loathing issues. Even after I came out, I came out when I was like 19, 18 years old. Um, but a lot had already kind of happened that really set in and really... Um, damaged a lot of my own self-perception. The positive side of that is that I was surrounded my entire childhood by a lot of peers who were, were very, very strong um, black women. At, at that time, we were just all peers together in middle school and high school. So these people were the ones that really were my allies. They gave me a voice, they taught me how to speak up, and I really paid attention to what they were going through because despite what a lot of people will say about uh, my hometown being a progressive or liberal city, I watched how these young black girls were treated by our non-black peers, and it was really, really uh, damaging and disheartening to me from pretty much the late 80s all the way through current times. So I've always tried to use my voice as a gay uh, Latino to really speak up for my black brothers and sisters. And when I got this opportunity, I jumped at it because I wanted to be a part of something that would inspire change and inspire learning and inspire intelligence and empathy through creativity. What I didn't count on and what is what it did in me because when you're dealing with a lot of traumatic episodes based on how you get treated by certain demographics of people that are not Latinos, not black, not brown people, and not heterosexual, you start to form a very negative opinion. And a, a lot of it became prejudice towards non-blacks or non-brown people, non-heterosexual people, because I just lost that trust. And it's been very, very difficult, especially in the last four years during this time of political divisiveness and upheaval. But what I will say is having been a part of the musical ensemble and watch a lot of people learn and want to learn and open their hearts and open their minds, especially with the way that Jennifer presents everything and also the way that um, Ginger reached out to her and to us. 
I'm seeing a moment of transformation in a lot of people, in their eyes, in their body language, in their behavior, the softening of faces. And seeing that has softened me because even though I have a long history of homophobic and racist trauma behind me that has done a lot of damage, I can't use that trauma as a shield or a blanket to keep me from growing or to keep me from wanting to do better and wanting to help other people see the light, so to speak. Um, you can't help people see the light by blazing like a phoenix all the time. I mean, that's my last name. But sometimes you just have to light a candle and then help someone else light their candle and then they'll, they'll, they'll help someone else light their candle and it just keeps going. And that's what being a part of If These Walls Could Talk has done for me. Because I think that it's one thing to have justifiable anger in seeing how black men and women or brown people are treated. But it's another thing to hold on to that so hard that when other people around you want to change and you just don't want to let them in, which then causes even more division. And that is, in my now educated opinion, after having been a part of this series, we have to reach out to one another, especially now with what's going on around the world. Um, the scary thing about COVID-19 is that it doesn't see color or race or cultural boundaries or religion or sexuality or gender. And humanity is coming to a reckoning with itself because of this. It's a really scary, uncertain time for many, but being a part of this honestly spiritually transformative event has softened me and it has helped me to just be more loving and be more kind to everyone but especially to those who I normally would look at and say wow they won't like me because I'm gay or they won't like the majority of my friends because they're black or brown to look at them and look at it as an opportunity to maybe help them light a candle because that's, I think, how not just us as Austinites, but how we as a society will begin to move forward. And um, I think that's what's the most important part is moving forward, learning from the past, engaging in the present, and looking forward to a brighter and better future. I love you guys. Ashe.